What should the county's role be in protecting the environment, and is the county doing enough? Well, I think the, the county's role should be aggressive from the standpoint that we're preserving uh, green space for all generations to come. And I, I think that they've done a good job in a lot of ways with that. Um, we have seen the set, aside, the set aside of three large parks in Scott County. Um, I would like to see those parks developed from a standpoint of having some usable space. But I think that we have set aside land for future generations from that standpoint. Our watershed districts in the county do an excellent job. Um, you, you see the development of the watershed all over. You see people protecting the lakes in this county. And from a standpoint of stormwater, they, they are trying to protect our lakes, rivers from any pollutants. Um, green development. Uh, Scott County, I believe, has been a, a fairly active partner from the standpoint of reusing um, natural resources. I, I know for a fact that, uh, for instance, uh, we have a new compost site in Scott County that is actually a joint partnership with the city of Prior Lake and the Shakopee, Middlewakanen Sioux community had just a great response from that standpoint. Uh, the Shakopee, Middlewakanen Sioux community is currently in partnership with Roar Malting in trying to provide reusable, uh, provide energy from the waste byproducts at Roar Malting. Uh, we're seeing uh, recently there's a, I believe it's a $2 million uh, hydroelectric windmill that is coming to Scott County, to the Shakopee, Middlewakanen Sioux community to help to reduce their burden on the local electric companies. Um, those, those are all good things that are happening. I, I don't think that we can do enough though um, from the standpoint of, an, from an energy standpoint, we, we have to continue to look for opportunities to become more efficient and less dependent on foreign oil. Thank you, Chad. Chad, some accuse the county of spending and raising too much money in the past. Are there any decisions that you would have made differently to save money? Well, I, I absolutely, um, first and foremost, I, I would not have purchased uh, the Cedar Lake Park, for instance. Um, I, I talked just a moment ago about green space and preserving it, but I look at Scott County and we, we have two unused parks in Scott County right now uh, that are not developed. One that we've owned since 1969 in Prior Lake. So um, I, I really question the decision-making process on that. For us to go buy $4 million worth of property and then take out a loan to pay for it, when we have two large areas right now that are undeveloped and are not being used by our citizens. So I, I, I would have certainly thought about taking a certain percent of that money and putting it into developing those parks. Um, right now you're looking at, you know, that, that was $77,000 an acre we paid for that property. And, um, I, I think we probably didn't get a good deal if you look at the, the land markets right now. Um, across the board, I, I think that we, we have to take a look at how we can be more efficient in all departments. I don't think that there is any level of government that could not be scrutinized more thoroughly and we could find areas of waste and um, that we could save the taxpayers dollars. I, I really believe that the, the plan that I would have would be to have all department heads submit uh, a list or a plan for reducing their budgets by 10% and then we take those and we prioritize which things have to stay and go. I mean, the bottom line is, is that there are opportunities to save money. And it's only the people running those departments can get in close to know what, it's, what it takes to do that. Um, I believe that I don't have the emotional involvement in those departments and I can walk in and say, listen, can you show me what can be done to make us better? Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Barbara, some have accused the county of spending and raising too much money in the past. Are there any decisions you would have made differently to save money? Um. Since I was on the board, I'm going to say no. There are no decisions I would have made differently. I have to say that we have probably five of the most conservative commissioners in the state of Minnesota. And we scrutinize all purchases, all projects, all budgets. And um, especially in the last few years when Commissioner Vogel was on the board, he was a banker who was very intelligent with uh, spreadsheets, budgets, and um, we discussed things very well. The parkland that is being referred to, yes, it was an investment. It is meant for preservation for the future. It is something that we knew we could not develop anytime soon. It was made, making the decision of buying the land before it gets developed or taking the chance it's still going to be there 10 years from now, which probably would not happen. Uh, so there was a definite decision in the beginning to buy it, to 
preserve it, knowing that it would be developed later and the park in Prior Lake uh, is in the process now of being developed little by little when we have money to do that. I said before that the three things that we don't have to do are parks, libraries, and building. Parks being in that category, there are many things that we have to provide and parks don't rise to the top. So was it an investment? Yes. But we also had grant money both from the state of Minnesota and from the Met Council to do that in the millions of dollars uh, to buy those parks and uh, you have to take the opportunity when it's there. They only have so much money and if you do not uh, take advantage of it, they give it to someone else. Five years from now, if we'd want a park, there'd be no opportunity to do that. When we built our jail, it's a basic building. It's very, uh, it has no frills. We built it for the future to be able to put a pot up on top if we needed it for more space. Uh, we took out all the frills. It has concrete walls uh, and uh, no decoration. It is built for uh, future expansion if we need it, if we need it, and Thank you, uh, 50 years. Thank you. And Barbara, where can the county improve operations and do more to collaborate with other agencies? We have made a large effort in the scale. Uh, organizations got come the Association for Leadership and Efficiency. I have been one of the two commissioners on that group since it was started. We meet monthly with cities, townships, school districts, uh, the Midwakan Sioux, and um, discuss projects that we can do together to be more collaborative, make it more efficient, economic for all of us. We were a player in the regional training facility, donated the land, building, and cash in order to make that a re reality for training our firefighters, our law enforcement, and our emergency responders. Uh, we collaborate with Dakota County and Carver County on various projects. Dakota County is doing some <coughs> for us in the human services area. We swap uh, tasks for them because they have a better program that can do it more efficiently and they're doing their own, so they do ours with it. And then we, we uh, collaborate on other projects for them through human services in Scott County. We've met with, Dakota, with Carver County a number of times in uh, conjunction with the river crossing project that is in the works, uh, trying to make sure that we are both on the same page that when we go forward and ask MnDOT for funding and put the uh, right of way on the map that uh, we are on the same page working with each other rather than against each other. So I think we do a lot in the area of collaboration because the bottom line is the more you can do together, the less you have to do individually, and it's certainly more cost effective when you can do it together. Thank you, Barbara. Chad, improving operations and uh, collaborating with other agencies. Well, I think there's lots of opportunities out there for us to do that. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that really comes to mind right off the top, and it, it's really stepping out of the box, but I, I believe that you, you have to set some goals and you have to decide what you actually want to accomplish. And once you set those goals, I, I think one of the areas that I would really like to look into is possibly some <coughs> consolidation of services. You look all over the county and the state, and we have lots of people doing the same things, whether it be Prior Lake Police, the Sheriff's Department, the Highway Department, the Parks Groups. Are there opportunities for us to put some of those departments together? I mean, we're going to instantaneously take out millions of dollars of levels of management salaries. So I, I think that, that that would be an area that I would want to look at for sure, um, especially in the, from the park standpoint. I think we've got two full-time staff that are managing the parks that we have right now that are undeveloped. I, I think that possibly those parks should go either to the townships or the cities that they're in, get some development of them, and that will indeed generate revenue that would go back either to the county or to the, the cities that they're in. But, you know, I, I see just the repetition of the same thing being done. Um, reorganization. I look at the city of Prior Lake. Two years ago, we, we, we saw what was coming down the line from a housing standpoint, a tax standpoint. We started to reorganize all departments. We've eliminated five <coughs> positions. We've moved people around. I haven't seen any of that reorganization from Scott County. I know that we have departments that are very close to the same staffing levels that they had in the past. I've interviewed several employees from accounting level in different departments. The discussion always comes up. We've got too much supervisory staff. It, it's got to change. I think the county commissioners pay. If we, $10,000 a year, five commissioners over 11 years, that's $500,000. 
we, we have opportunities and we just have to be bold enough to take them. Thank you, Chad.